Well, here's another awful story for you this morning. Chilling 911 calls have just been released from the moment that a man set fire to his home with his, himself and his two young sons inside. Josh Powell was long considered a person of interest in his wife Susan's disappearance. Today, we hear from a horrified social worker who explains exactly what Powell did after she dropped his sons off for a visit with him. Listen to this. Yes, she exploded the house. Ma'am, yes. you know the house. Okay, you know if anyone's in the house? Yes, there was a man and two children. I just dropped off the children and he wouldn't let me in the door. And people are saying there's not somebody here, but I was just there and there is somebody here. There's two little boys in the house. You saw him go back into the house when the flame, right before the flame? He didn't ever leave the house. He just opened the door. The kids were... Kids were one step ahead of me. They're five and seven. They were one step ahead of me, and he slammed the door in my face. And you think he might have done this intentionally? Yeah. Oh. What an unbelievably awful uh, tape that is. Mm. And now everybody wondering if anything could have been done to prevent this. Dan Springer's live in Seattle. Mm. Uh, Dan, this case took a terrible turn, uh, but it is not over yet. So what happens now? Well, uh, Martha, we knew that that 911 call from the caseworker was going to be gripping, and it certainly was. Uh, can you imagine being her? But there are other new developments in the case today. We have learned that prosecutors in Utah had been pursuing the Susan Powell disappearance as a first-degree murder case for at least the last six months. Also, police say Josh Paul made a $7,000 bank withdrawal on Saturday, one day before torching his house and killing his boys. No word on what happened to the money. And there were those uh, 911 calls, many more, released by police yesterday, including calls from neighbors who were frantic watching the house burn and calls from people who had received those last-minute emails from Josh Powell. I just saw on the news that there was a problem today, and I did receive a strange email from him uh, that he sent at 12.05 today. So, okay. You know, he, he hasn't personally contacted me, but I did receive an email. What the email say? I'm sorry, goodbye. I don't, God, I don't know. Um, Smoke and fire? Yes, in a loud, huge boom. And there's crap flying all over the place, dark smoke. It, there's other people that can see it. And local prosecutor here in uh, Pierce County says Powell's final act amounted to a confession that he killed his wife. Martha. Dan, lawmakers in Washington state looking at this situation, and you just have to wonder, given the investigation that was going on for first-degree murder and the fact that he was a person of interest in this case from early on, how he could have possibly been able to have this time alone with his children in the first place. Well, a lot of questions being raised by state lawmakers about the visitation. Uh, lawmakers who oversee the Department of Social Services are looking into why visitations were allowed to take place at Josh Powell's house. We've learned that he had just rented that place a couple months ago, but was apparently still living in his father's house about a mile and a half away. Initially, the court ordered twice-a-week visitations. Uh, they were taking place in a neutral location, which experts say is standard procedure in cases where a parent is under investigation. Here we have a guy who's the person of interest in the disappearance of his wife. We have the guy's father who's in jail for some other disgusting stuff related to children. Uh, and the supervision uh, is okay for a visitation, but a visitation at the home is just not appropriate. Of course, it also could be just a judge's ruling in that case. We'll have to find out. Also last night, police searched a storage locker that was rented by Josh Paul. We understand they took some items, but nothing of immediate note. And the funeral for the boys will be held on Saturday. Martha? What a, what a tragedy. What an awful, awful story, Dan. Uh, thank you for the update on that. Unbelievable. Yeah.